then I'm going to turn it over to Flory. Reporting story. Okay. Hi, I'm Flory. I'm a registered dietitian and a diabetes educator. Um, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, eating your way through a healthy review. If you eat healthy now, you will stay healthy later. Healthy eating has a huge impact on your overall health and your quality of life. And it becomes more important and more apparent as you grow older. So today, I'd like to cover a few main points about nutrition that may make a difference in your life. All right. We eat too many bed foods in America. Too many things that are in a bag, in a box, and they're just plain dead. You need live foods to make us feel alive and be alive and have, have life within us. Um, we eat too, we eat, tend to eat too little fruits and vegetables and too many grain products and starches and starchy snacks. Now, eating more veggies means less calories and less carbohydrates. Eating more fruits also means less calories and in most cases less carbohydrates as well because our portion sizes for starchy foods are usually larger than they would be for fruit. As an extra bonus, people whose diets are high in veggies and fruits have a significantly lower rate of many types of cancer and they tend to be lighter in weight. Um, here's how you can increase the life in your food. Okay, some suggestions. Um, uh, we'll go through these one by one. Just, just some ideas to put it into your, your own life. So, number one, try to eat a fruit or a veggie or, or both at each meal. So, if, if your goal is to eat something live at each meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you could put a piece of fruit with your uh, peanut butter toast in the morning. Or if you're grabbing a granola bar, add a piece of fruit to it. If you're making eggs, put some veggies in with your, your eggs. At lunch, it's easy to add a piece of fruit or some raw veggies to go with your sandwich instead of chips or maybe with the chips and then maybe you're not going to eat as many chips. Um, and then, of course, uh, dinner, is, we usually do a better job of eating veggies at dinner, hopefully, but um, that's a good goal. Fruit as a first choice for snacks, always, you're going to be happier that way. If you have it, you're going to eat it, odds are. If you, you bring it for yourself, you're going to eat it. If, if you don't bring it, it doesn't get eaten, and then you start crawling around the vending machines and the, the um, boxes of dead food. Uh, try to improve your, your cooking skills because it's true, fruits and vegetables uh, are more trouble to uh, prepare. So if you fool around with, with cooking and maybe you take a cooking class or whatever, just try a new recipe once a week. Uh, that would be helpful as well. Um, Plan your meals in advance. If you make the effort to plan two or three healthy dinners each week, you're going to be uh, bumping up the, the fruits and vegetables because you'll have a plan. You'll have those uh, those foods, fresh foods, in your fridge so that you can go ahead and, and make them for dinner. If you don't think about it, then it's not going to happen because you're not going to be able to uh, go shopping first and get the, the foods that you need. So you don't have to plan Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Just think two or three things that are going to make a, uh, a difference each week. Two or three meals can really make a difference each week. Um, it's a good idea to shop some different places because if you always go to the same grocery store, then you're going to have exposure to those same uh, 15 vegetables that they always carry. So if you go to a, a farmer's market, a produce stand, a natural food market, or, or even a different supermarket, you're going to have exposure to different fruits and vegetables than, than you usually are used to seeing, and then you're going to be trying some new things. 
be brave. Try some veggies or fruits that you haven't tried before. Um, who's ever had raw beef as a snack? They're delicious. They, they're sweet, just like a carrot. Um, bok choy, uh, I see that in the supermarket all the time. It's uh, Chinese celery. It's crunchy and delicious. It's good for a snack. You don't have to cook it. Um, there's all kinds of stuff to try. All kinds of greens. We're so used to just a limited amount of, of, of fruits and vegetables. So expand yourself. Uh, expand your... Um, yes. Expand yourself. <laughs> try some new things. Okay. And then uh, another thing to do is to make different types of salads so you don't get bored. People say, oh, I'm so sick of the salads. Well, have you made a tomato salad? Tomatoes, cucumbers, mangoes, and uh, lime juice and salt and pepper. Delicious. You can make different kinds of broccoli salad with maybe a little bit of uh, ramen noodles in there, uh, something like that. Uh, there's all kinds of different salads that you can make. Mushroom salads um, marinated in soy sauce or Worcestershire sauce with, with a few um, onions and green peppers. There's all kinds of delicious things. Look in your recipe books. Look in uh, uh, Cooking Light magazine. Go to the library. They've got a, a, a lot of, of cookbooks and healthy kind of cookbooks, ethnic cookbooks. Uh, for free. You take them home, you like the recipe, and then you can uh, copy it down. If you really like the cookbook, then you can buy it. Okay, does anybody have any questions so far? Um, um, I mean, can everybody hear us okay and see the video okay? You can go ahead and change the screen. I saw Paul has an echo. Hopefully, that I turned down the volume. Hopefully, we resolve that. Let me go ahead and clear. Oh, John Stump, can you hear us okay? You can't hear us very well. All right. Yeah, it could be. Well, this is my Okay. Um, is this better? Am I, should I talk louder? Is this louder? better? No. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Let's we'll do some. Uh, no, no, we can do fine. Yeah, okay. Yeah. They're gonna see everything. We're all tied up. Uh, we can. We'll do it afterwards. Okay. How's that sound now? Sounds better. Okay, stop so. All right. Uh, I can I can cut that out. Okay. Okay. Ready to go? We're gonna continue. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so um, just a, a, a quick review of the uh, basics of, of nutrition, or kind of a nutrition 101. There's uh, six things that food is made up of. They're called nutrients. They're the building blocks of food, which is pretty amazing with all the different foods that we have. There's only six things that it's made up of. Um, that's a good one. Okay. Okay, we're back with you. Lori's back with us, and uh, okay. we'll continue on. Um, the uh, well, the, the first one I was going to talk about is carbohydrates. They are your energy food. They're your the fuel that your body runs on. So you you need carbohydrates. Um, there's been a, 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 a popular the, the popular weight loss diets feature high protein and low carbohydrates, which is okay. I think we probably are eating too many carbohydrates 
um, you know, too many starchy things and, and again not enough fruits and vegetables. There's good examples of carbohydrates and, and poor quality carbohydrates that uh, we'll talk about in, in a little bit, but we want to give our body good quality carbohydrates. We want to kind of space it out through the day so that you're, you're getting little doses of fuel as you, uh, as you run along the day, not overfilling or underfilling your tank. This makes you feel really good and, and energizes and energized. Um, I see a question that says, what's a good amount of carbohydrate? That's extremely variable. It depends on how old you are, whether you're a male or female, whether you're tall or short, uh, whether you're overweight or not, whether you're active or not, so it, it's pretty variable. Um, you could start with an estimate of um, maybe 45 grams of, of carbohydrate at each meal and 15 to 30 for a snack. Um, some of you people who are um, very active during the day, you're going to need more. So it, it's hard to tell. Um, you can go, uh, get with a registered dietitian and uh, he or she can calculate the exact number of grams that you need. You can figure out the number of calories that you need maybe and, and do um, uh, 40 to 50 percent carbohydrate if, if that is helpful to you. And then I can help you too if somebody wanted to, to send me an email or call me. That was on the first screen. Um, simple sugars and complex sugars we're going to talk about next. Um, I, I prefer calling them high quality carbohydrates and poor quality carbohydrates so that you know you want good fuel for your body. Okay, um, protein. Protein is um, what your, the structure of your body is made up of and also your immune system so you need uh, of protein on a, on a daily basis also. There's vegetarian sources of protein besides animal protein and again the amounts you, you need it is variable. Guys need more than, than women. Um, younger people need more than, than well that's very, they're, they still really don't know everything there is to know about nutrition because nutrition is a young science. We've only been studying it for mm, you know a generation or so. Um, so somebody asked how much protein can you metabolize at one setting? I don't, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I, I know probably that you might tend to overload on protein because you want to you know, build up your muscles and, and, and such, but um, Americans tend to eat two to two and a half times the amount of protein they need per day. So if, if you're not using it, you're just going to be peeing it out. Um, uh, I heard grams twenty. Twenty grams. Twenty grams. I, I don't. I don't know. If you heard that from a trainer, I don't know if that's uh, a, a, some, someone who is studying nutrition. I'd have to look it up. I, I don't know offhand. Okay. So um, fat. Uh, there's. They used to think all fat was was bad and you were supposed to just eliminate all the, the fat in your diet in order to avoid heart disease. But now we know that there are good types of, of fat that are actually heart protect, protective um, and we will review examples. Um, vitamins, minerals, water, those, uh, the reason why the carbohydrates, protein and fat have, have, um, have check marks is because they all have protein, they all have calories. That vitamins, minerals, and water don't have calories. So that's, that's oh, interesting. Uh, I'm sure you've had discussions on how important water is to your body and, and getting enough water, so we, we won't go much into that. But uh, when you're thirsty, that's what your body wants and that's what you should be drinking. Um, if you drink uh, soda and um, other man-made drinks to quench your thirst, odds are there's going to be mineral salts in there and that just makes you thirsty again 15-20 minutes later. How about supplements? How many of you guys are taking some kind of a vitamin supplement like um, to improve uh, you know, your health or your conditioning? Give us a check if you're taking something 
something that you get at the health food store. Um, you know, anybody taking anything extra in addition? Even a uh, lots of guys around here drink energy drinks. What's your position on these types of drinks? Yeah, yeah, we get a lot of that. The um, Red Bull and all yeah. that stuff. They, they won't hurt you. I mean, you probably <laughs> we all should be getting good amounts of sleep at night because that's really why you're tired. And the energy drinks will make you feel okay for a while. They, they're not going to really, really hurt you. Um, but your body really needs rest. So if you're tired all the time, then then go to bed earlier. Easier said than done. I'm, I'm not very good about that either. Um, any other questions? Okay. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to go through um, best choices for carbohydrates. Um, here's a, a, a chart that, that you can use. Um, the, there's five types of carbohydrate containing food. Uh, the first one is fruit. All fruit is healthy. There's none that you can't eat because it's too sugary or whatever. The sugar in the fruit is released very slowly into your body as it gets digested. Something that's in its whole natural form is going to be um, digested more slowly than something that's been processed. So if you're eating uh, crackers, for example, they've done a lot to that. It starts with wheat. So the wheat is, is the outer portion of the wheat is stripped off, it's, it's milled, it's turned into flour, the flour is then combined with other ingredients, it's baked, it's, the dough is rolled, there's all kinds of stuff that they do to it. So when it gets in your belly, it very easily breaks apart because the molecules have already been desiccated. Um, fruit is in its whole form. It's just picked off the tree and here you go. So your body has to do a lot of digesting to pull it apart and, and, and send it on to the rest of, of your body. So the sugar in the fruit is going to be released very slowly. That's why it's really good energy fuel. Oh, yeah. Oh, someone said it. Yeah. All right. Okay, you can hear us. Um, should I just okay. go on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're recording right now, so it's fine. Okay. Well, um, uh, on the other hand, fruit juice is not really a healthy food. I know the fruit juice manufacturers want you to think that it's healthy because it's made from real uh, fruit, but it's it's really very concentrated. It's got a lot of sugar and it has a lot of calories as well. So. Uh, fruit juice is okay for a treat, but we shouldn't be drinking it all the time because it's too sugary and it's it's not in its whole form. There's stuff that's been done to it. It goes to the the factory and um, and you should be eating you know one orange at a time, maybe two oranges at a time. If you're drinking orange juice, there's five or six oranges that have been squished and the healthy fiber removed. Um, when you drink it, and that's even just a small glass. If you're drinking a 12-ounce a, a glass, that's going to have uh, maybe 10 oranges squeezed in there. So not, not so healthy. So don't use it to quench your thirst, just use it for a treat sometimes. Um, grain foods, of course, now we know that we're supposed to be eating whole grains. So people are doing a, a, a better job with that. Um, th that would be whole wheat, um, whole oats. Barley is a grain that we forget to eat. That's a, a nice substitute for, for rice. Um, and uh, then um, the things that you don't want to eat very, the poor quality carbohydrate would be white flour, things made from white flour, white rice because it goes, uh, it, it has, uh, it's very processed and it goes through your, your system very quickly. Um, pasta, unless you get the whole wheat pasta, now it's going to be on the on the good side. Okay. So yeah, question about sweet potatoes. Oh, we'll talk about veggies in a second. Um, and bagels and all all this stuff is is made with uh, white flour, so they should be eaten seldomly. When you're trying to decide whether a product is a whole grain product or not, read the list of ingredients and see if 
some kind of whole grain is the first ingredient. Um, like it should say whole wheat or whole oats as the first ingredient. The, the food manufacturers are being rather tricky and they'll say made with whole wheat or, or made with whole grain or multi-grain and it's like mainly white flour and they'll throw a little poof of, of whole grain in there and now they can call and now they can say made with whole grain or they can say multi-grain. So be careful and, and, and read the ingredients so they so they don't trick you. Okay. Um, we'll go on to uh, dairy foods. Uh, the best choices are going to be the the kind of dairy that eliminates the um, the sticky saturated fat that's found in animal products. Saturated fat is going to do a really good job of clogging up your veins and arteries, so you want to avoid that if you can. So um, find some lower fat cheeses that you like if you're a cheese lover. Uh, we should be drinking fat-free or 1% milk. That's anybody over the age of two should be drinking that type of milk, not whole and not 2%. Too much butter fat in 2% in and whole milk, and that's a very sticky, artery-clogging fat. Um, so, uh, and these are the things that you, you don't want to eat that as often. Don't forget ice cream. It's got a lot of butter fat too, so it's, it's a treat that a lot of people like. I recommend that, that you buy the ice cream on a stick so that you can enjoy it and yet the portion size is, is reasonable. Um, all right, on to starchy vegetables. That's another type of, uh, it's the fourth type of uh, carbohydrate containing food. So the, the healthy ones, beans, peas, lentils, sweet potatoes, squash, because these have fiber, so um, their, their sugars are released more slowly into the body, so we get long burning fuel, good quality fuel. Um, I forgot to mention that our bodies are, are smart. It burns the high quality fuel first. It prefers that. And the junky stuff that says, I'm not burning that. It'll throw it into your bloodstream. Your blood sugar will raise. Um, you might get a little buzz for a short amount of time, but then it's gone, and, and you don't have any good quality fuel to run on. And the the other point is that if you don't burn it up in a couple of hours, it's going to turn to fat. Um, here's the the um, carbohydrate-containing foods that we don't want to eat as as often. Potatoes are on there because potatoes are um, they've been um, hybridized over the years. Um, to be a concentrated source of, of fuel for people who didn't have access to high quality food. Like uh, the people in Northern Europe lived on potatoes for a long time and that was, that was what, what kept them alive. So um, now because we have a lot of food in um, America, we don't need that concentrated of a fuel. So. Um, you can eat potatoes, but make them the smaller size, and and maybe do the the sweet potatoes more often. Um, corn is a food that people tend to overeat. A fresh ear of sweet corn is is great. No, you're good. You're, oh, you're, well, yeah, they can see it. Yeah, because it's just. Uh, it's just. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, a fresh ear of sweet corn is is great, but where we get into trouble is we eat big piles of frozen corn or canned corn. So it's the amount of an ear of corn or maybe two ears of corn might be okay for, for more active people. Um, but eating a lot, a lot of corn at one setting and then maybe eating with potatoes and bread and you know other starchy foods at the same meal is going to be too much. Um, what about french fries like Five Guys where they say peanut oil and uh, real potatoes? Still bad. Yeah, I mean that's like saying uh, I saw a commercial for Pop Tarts has real fruit made with yeah. real fruit. Well, there's a crumb of real fruit in there. Uh, just one molecule of something healthy, you know, in in something unhealthy doesn't change it into healthy. Uh, fried foods, you know, we should be saving those for a treat. French fries are pretty much for for kids. When you're an adult and you're eating French fries all the time, mm -hmm. that's not good. Um, it, maybe it helps that it's peanut oil rather than, than trans fat. So, but what's the serving size? Yeah. yeah. So, okay. 
Uh, last carbohydrate containing food group is sugar and junk. So you're not, nobody's perfect. It's, you can't eat totally healthy 100% of the time. But are you eating healthily more often than, than unhealthily? Uh, see, see if you're in balance. See if you can push yourself to be in the, the, the balance whereby you're eating healthier foods more often than unhealthy foods. The sugar and junk is all around us every place, so um, the better choices would be the, the chips um, that are baked and not fried. Uh, there's some um, whole wheat crackers that can satisfy your, your need for crunch and, and, and salt. If you're a, a chip person, look for um, Triscuits and Wheat Thins and, and stuff like that. That would be a good idea. Um, they, they do have some good baked um, snacks that are... Uh, I don't have an appointment at 11 o'clock. I know. Your next appointment. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. Okay. All right. So when you when you're looking for snacks, watch out for the ones that have powdery seasoning on them, like Doritos and stuff like that, because there's um, the food manufacturers have engineered that seasoning to rev up your appetite so that once you start eating it, you get kind of nuts out and you want to eat more and more. So try to eat the plain version rather than like the ranch or the nacho cheese version of, of your snacks and you'll find that, that you're eating less of them. Um, you know, you want to look for some lower sugar and lower fat also kind of um, standard device. And then um, for your serving size for, for the snacky foods that, you, that have a lot of calories and fat and salt and sugar and stuff like that, try to use your hand because your hand matches your, your body size, right? Okay? Um, so if you're having that, fill up a handful and, and try and be satisfied with, with that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Did I handle all your, your questions? Okay. All right, we're on to the best choices for protein. Um, you can divide it into four categories. Um, for good heart health, you want to eat the uh, very lean and the lean proteins because what you're trying to avoid is the sticky kind of animal fat. The saturated fat is, is what in, what's in animal fat, and that is what will clog up your veins and arteries. I'm not saying you should never have these these foods, but if you stick mainly to the very lean and lean, you're going to have a lower uh, cholesterol level when your your blood is tested, and you're more apt to avoid heart disease. If you've got heart disease, uh, a history of cardiovascular disease in your family, or you have some some risk factors, then then this becomes more important. So. Um, on the very lean list, uh, beans, peas, and lentils, we forget that beans are a good protein source. Our ancestors ate beans all the time. Uh, cowboys always ate beans, including beans for breakfast. But um, it's a very, very healthy food, and, and we've gotten away from, from eating it. And it's very healthy. It actually can help lower your cholesterol even better than, than uh, Cheerios on the commercial. Uh, so can an apple. An apple and beans have more soluble fiber than oats do. So um, the, when, the when you're talking oats. about beans, you're, you mean beans that you have to prepare, not like a can of uh, Van Camps or, or something like that? Or is well, the process you can use canned beans, you know, like pintos or kidney beans or black beans. I would give them a good rinse in the colander to get that salty brine out. The baked beans, um, they may have pieces of fatty pork in there, and then they also are, are sure. cooked for, yes. They're cooked for a long time in sugar and molasses, so they absorb a lot of sweet stuff. So that they're not as they're not as good as, as maybe plain beans, and you can flavor them yourself with different spices and um, and such. So when you're talking about beans, we stay with plain beans. Stay away from the canned baked beans with all the sugar and stuff in it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can maybe you know find a, a type of baked bean that has lower sugar. If you look in the um, natural food department of the grocery store, they have better options for, for baked beans. 
that you can make your own for sure. Um, there's all kinds of recipes and, and, and such. Mm -hmm. uh, bean soups, fabulous. And, and maybe, you know, once a week, make yourself a pot of soup uh, featuring beans or lentils or split peas and, and stuff like that. You can really make some yummy soups. Uh, you can do salads with beans and, and fresh vegetables, um, asparagus and black beans and tomatoes and, and some uh, cumin and garlic and boy that's yummy stuff. You can use a little you know Italian seasoning that has that olive oil vinegar um, taste to it, balsamic vinegar, make it taste really yummy. Um, white meat of, of poultry and fish we know are, are, are healthy and, and, and low in saturated fat. Shellfish are back on the good list because what we have discovered that it's not the cholesterol that you ingest that makes you have high blood cholesterol, but um, the foods that are high in saturated fat that makes your own liver produce cholesterol. So um, the, the cholesterol in the itty bitty critters, the shrimp and the crab and, and lobster, weren't enough to raise your blood cholesterol levels. So they are back on the good list, which is which is yummy. Shrimp is, you can buy the cooked frozen mm -hmm. shrimp that are delicious and easy to prepare. I, I keep it in the house all the time. If you're too tired to cook when you come home from work, that's a good option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then here's the leanest cuts of beef. So you know, beef is red meat is not on the no-no list as long as it's meat, as it's lean. So now we've gone up a category. So each time you go up a category, there's more fat and there's more calories. So, uh, but I would I, I draw the line here with the very lean and lean as as the sort of good list, and then the medium fat and high fat to eat less often. So if you get a hamburger at a restaurant, it's not going to be lean beef. If you make your own hamburger, yeah, you can buy uh, lean beef, and then and then a hamburger is going to be healthy. But at a restaurant, they're not going to use lean lean beef. They're going to use a fattier beef because uh, it's tastier. Like the um, and then uh, here's some examples of the uh, lower fat cheese. The, the cheese that's l overall lowest in fat is Parmesan. And it has a really cheesy flavor. So you can, uh, if you are a cheese lover, what you might want to do is use a small amount of a high fat cheese, put some Parmesan cheese with it so that it makes it taste cheesier. And now you can use less of the uh, lower fat cheese. Um, these foods we shouldn't be eating too often because they've got a lot of saturated fat. So be careful if these are some of your favorites. Maybe you can think of some substitutes or eat them less often or eat smaller amounts. Okay. Any, any questions so far? Any questions on the protein foods? Yep. Flory mentioned something. I'm going to do something here. She mentioned about um, um, about drawing the line, and I don't think you guys got it because, um, let me see, let me, just, let me just try. Basically, she said, here's where she'll draw the line, when she was talking about drawing the line, is the ones above here are better than the ones going below. And this is kind of stuff you don't want to eat as often, is what she was saying. Is everything down in this area you want to moderate on where this is good stuff here is okay? Right. Has everybody got that? See that? Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you're still with us here and you can see everything. Give me a little hand clap there. Can you still hear us and see us? Yeah, there's some. There we go. Great. Good. Okay, we just want to, because you guys are awful quiet out there. Mm -hmm. uh, there we go. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Good. Um, All right. Somebody asked a question about barley. Um, Click right here. Okay. Click on that. All right. That'll take it off. Okay. Um, barley is a, a grain that we forget to eat, but it's really yummy. Um, you can you can use it instead of rice or pasta, and it's because it's a whole grain, it's going to be healthier and uh, um, more slowly metabolized. So it's a, a quality. Um, carbohydrate. We have some guys oh, for hunters. We have quite a few hunters. Me. Let's let's go back to that slide with the protein. And oh, you're right. I don't have it on here. I need to add venison is is a very lean meat, so it would be it would be in this um, category here, the the lean category, um, because the the animals that you hunt out in the wild, they're doing a lot of running, so they don't have the fat like a big 
a cow or pig that sits around in a corral. So, um, very good uh, source of, of lean meat. <laughs> okay. All right. So, let's tell you about which are the, the good and bad types of fat. Here's a, um, some pictures I drew. Uh, the if you remember the little smiley faces, this one has an angel halo on it. It's, oh, I, I didn't want to okay. draw the... Uh, we can go to... Um, <laughs> this is... Let's see, uh, oh, well, we'll just go on. Um, so the, the, the first category um, is monounsaturated fat, and that is the heart-protective kinds of fat. So these foods can prevent plaque from sticking to your blood vessel walls. They have linolenic acid in them. So we need to eat more of these foods. So um, olive oil, canola oil, peanut oil are all good types of, of fat to cook in. Um, avocados are, are yummy and you can make um, guacamole with that or slice avocados on your um, sandwich instead of a piece of cheese to give it that same kind of smooth taste. Um, nuts, you, I think that we've, we've got the message now that nuts are healthy, but it's best to eat the good raw nuts because once they're treated with heat, then the he healthy antioxidants go bye-bye. So get the good fresh raw nuts at the health food store the, um, or, you know, raw baking nuts, but they're, I like to buy them at the health food store because they're really fresh there. They, they have a better turnover. Um, peanut butter is a healthy food. You want to get the natural peanut butter. Uh, sometimes it's called old-fashioned, where the oil is floating on the top. The ingredients are just peanuts and salt. Otherwise, if you're buying the generic peanut butter, Jiffy, Skippy, Peter Pan, um, that is uh, mostly Crisco. They stir some peanuts, ground peanuts, into it, and they add sugar. So that's that's not so healthy. So get the natural peanut butter. Um, at the same time, if we're adding more of the healthy kind of fat to diet, we have to have less of the bad kinds of fat, otherwise we're just plopping more on the pile. So we, we talked a little bit about uh, saturated fat, which is, uh, comes from animal foods and is a very sticky kind of fat. Um, here's butter and whole milk and cheese. They're made from, um, from whole milk, uh, ice cream, sour cream, cocoa butter. Um, which is an ingredient in chocolate, lard and beef and any meat that's not on the very lean or lean list that we already discussed are going to be high in this um, saturated, saturated fat, which you see the double face here. Um, next type of fat is the polyunsaturated fat. That's kind of neutral. It's not healthy, not unhealthy. It's, it's okay to eat, but um, better better to, to have the monounsaturated fat because then you'll get the, the angel smiley face. So in, instead of corn oil, uh, to, to use the uh, olive oil. And the best salad dressings to use would be olive oil based salad dressing. You don't have to get that free. Yeah, all, as long as they're um, olive oil based rather than the, the creamy ones. If you are a lover of uh, blue cheese or ranch or, or something creamy and high calorie. Try to, maybe you want to dress your salad with a low fat version or a kind of like an olive oil vinaigrette that doesn't have too much flavor and just add a little drizzle of the creamy stuff on the top and then when you eat your salad you're going to taste it on your tongue but it's not going to be coating all four sides of your, of your uh, salad greens. Okay, um, trans fat is also a um, it has a devil face where um, uh, it, it causes heart attacks. People whose diets are high in trans fats have a much higher incidence of heart attacks. Um, the, the new dietary guidelines that just came out say we're supposed to eat as little trans fat as we can. Now what are trans fats? Trans fats are a man-made kind of fat and it's, what they do is they take a liquid oil, they force hydrogen molecules into it so now it's, it's sticky and stiff. Now it's, it has the properties of saturated fat. It's sticky and it will clog your veins and arteries and do um, put you more at risk. Now these are the, the it's, it's a lot of the snacky foods that we eat are high in trans fat and the reason why we like them is because trans fats makes food crispy. 
So that's that's why we like it so much, but uh, it, it gets us in trouble. So see all this, the see the cheeses on this list. I know somebody was eating those earlier today. So uh, maybe what would be better is if you made a piece of um, whole wheat toast and put some Parmesan cheese on it and put it in the toaster and it'd get kind of melty and cheesy and that would be um, healthier for you than than eating the cheeses. The stuff that you know we get kind of lazy about feeding our ourselves. Um, but just taking a, a little bit of extra time to, to feed yourself well also does something to your um, your whole well-being because now you're nourishing yourself, you're caring for yourself, and that makes you healthier also, just that simple act. So, all right, so you see all the, all, all the, the junk foods and the, the, the cheeses and the Doritos and the donuts and the, and the candy and all that kind of stuff. We, we know that's bad for us. Find stuff that you like almost as well. Keep healthy snacks around you and you're not going to be as vulnerable to the impulse to snack on those horribly delicious foods. They're, they're so delicious, they're overly delicious. The food manufacturers have done this to us. They make foods that are, that are so delicious, they're horrible. So, huh. yeah, horribly delicious. All right. Um, putting it in place. Here's a little bit of, of how you can put it into your own life in an easier way. Um, I recommend that uh, you, you know, now that you know what to eat, what do you do? One thing that um, can be helpful to you is to make a weekly plan for your dinners. You can keep you know, breakfast and lunch a bit boring um, and, and still be happy by, by eating, you know, the same three or four healthy choices for, for breakfast and, and lunch on a daily basis, but most of us want uh, variety for dinner. So um, if you think about what, what you want to make for, uh, for dinner, if you pick maybe two or three things that, that you're going to make for, for dinner for the, the week, then you can go shopping. You can have those food items in your house. And then you only have to think about what you're going to eat for the week once. Instead of coming home every single day, and deciding what should we have for dinner on it each day. I don't know about you, but you know I work full time, and when I get home from work, I'm I'm tired, and I don't even want to decide what to make for dinner. But if I spend maybe 10 minutes before I go to the grocery store each week and think about you know three dinners that I'm going to make that week, I have the ingredients in the refrigerator, and I have a, a plan written down those those things. Then I only have to do it once once a week and I'm done. I don't have to think about it each time. I can come home, I know what I'm going to make, I just open the refrigerator and start to, to cook a little bit. These guys, they work three every third day, they're working 24 hours and they eat two to three meals a day, eat with each other mm -hmm. every third day. And I know, I know when I was on shift, we never really planned. Well, sometimes, depending on if you had a cook, somebody that liked to cook, then we'd have a plan. But if there's no one that cooks, it's just like, you know, what are we going to have for lunch, where are we going to go, or, you know, that kind of thing, so. Right, if you don't think about it in advance, then you are at the mercy of uh, society's convenience, which is it's so. junk. It's not healthy. So unless you, you think about it, uh, it's going to be harder to get some kind of a, a healthy uh, meal in you. You, what you might want to do if you go out to eat a lot is make a list of all the restaurants that you go to and then go back and rate them one, two, or three. One means you can get a good healthy meal there that you like. Mm -hmm. uh, three is the place where you pick out like the five guys. Right. Okay? And uh, two would be in between. You can't decide. So then when it comes time to, to go out to eat, you pull out the list and choose mainly the number one restaurants. Every once in a while you can go to a two or a three. But now you're improving your odds that you're going to have something healthy to eat. And then the other thing is like when they come on shift, maybe put a plan together uh, if they're going to eat together of what they're going to have and maybe put a schedule ahead of time so that way they won't come in and say, hey, what are we going to eat for lunch? Because I know that happens every day is that dinner and lunch. Are, I'm sure a lot of you guys, let me know, do you guys put a plan together when you, um, as far as eating together ahead of time or do you just throw it together 
when it comes time to have dinner. Can anybody respond to that? You just throw, throw it together. It together. So yeah. if you throw it together, the odds are you're not going to have a, a lot of fresh food, right? It's going to be in a bag, in a box, and canned stuff, and pasta, and yeah. So if if somebody thought a little bit ahead and um, made a trip to the store, you could have some lean turkey sausage. You could have some uh, peppers and onions and and asparagus, whatever vegetables. You kind of stir fry that a little bit and then put that on the pasta with some sauce and now you're way healthier. You're eating more vegetables and a little less pasta. Is Rodney the box king? Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> is Rodney creative? Is that is that why? You, you, they, they sent a message that said Rodney's the box king. Someone who's creative um, should start maybe um, reading some some cookbooks or um, magazines. A Cooking Light magazine, um, Eating Well magazine, all has 30-minute uh, uh, recipes, sometimes 15-minute recipes, healthy stuff that you can put together very easily. I have recipes too. I'll be glad to share my recipes. Send me an email. I'll send you my recipes. Everything from a microwave box. Somebody's just sent a message. They, they eat everything from a microwave box. That doesn't taste too good, does it? Hmm. Okay, uh, let's let's go on until we have uh, time to uh, communicate. Um, this this is kind of a different direction that that maybe you're not thinking about. Um, and and the point I want to make is is you've got to think think about what you're eating. If you just go along and don't even think about your nutrition or your body's nutrition needs until you're really really hungry, then you're not going to have as good a result as if you, you you think about it a little bit. We don't, we're, we're so often, we're just so busy, we don't pay attention to our eating, we're rushed, we eat while we're doing other things, we don't listen to our own bodies, we, and we bypass our brains. So, let me just give you some, something to think about. Um, mind, mindful eating, um, here, here's the principles of mindful eating. Um, First is to reject the diet mentality. If the focus is on health instead of weight loss, you'll probably be more successful in making nutritious eating a part of your life. Because a diet is temporary, it's not a permanent change in, in your eating style. Um, next one is honor your hunger. Um, I, I found with myself and my clients that uh, oh, that, just one more thing I wanted to say is that with, with my clients and, and with myself, if if you work on trying to be healthy, the, the weight just automatically comes off. Uh, honor your hunger. Um, so often we eat not because we're really hungry, but just because food is available. So availability is a big factor. Some of us are more sensitive to the sight of food than others. Um, if you are someone who gets in trouble with that, then it's it's good to just turn your eyes away. If you can um, walk away from that food and stop staring at it, then you're going to do better. Um, they, they've done tests with, with people, uh, the people that have a lot of um, when they eat when they're not hungry, they're going to be standing near the table of food. They're going to be watching people more. The, the eyes have a big, uh, play a, a big part in this. So turn, turn your head away, uh, leave the room. That, that helps. Um, feel your, your fullness. That, that's another principle of, of mindful eating. A, a lot of us are out, in, out of touch with our feelings of fullness and uh, some of you may not even be able to tell whether you're full or, anymore, or or maybe you can't tell when you're full until you're over full and uncomfortably stuffed. Uh, one thing that, that will help is to use the 50% rule. That is where you are, you have a meal or a snack and you stop exactly halfway and assess how full you are growing. If you're feeling any twinges of fullness, then you need to maybe have one or two or three more bites, savor it, and stop. 
also you need to if you are eating very quickly, you're not going to feel the 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 feelings that you are growing full. There's a difference between just starving and stuffed. There's a a, a road in between there, and and you have to feel the 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 feelings of, of growing full. Sometimes when you stop eating, then all your digestive juices fill your stomach, and then you're like, oh my god, I ate too much. So you have to. Uh, be slow about it, and if you're you're getting feelings of fullness, then then stop. Um, discover your satisfaction factor. There's a difference between being satisfied and being full. Have you ever like split a dessert with with someone and still uh, be been satisfied with it, and it's not exactly you're not totally full. So you can be satisfied with with things and enjoy it without being totally full. And then the, the last uh, principle of mindful eating is to cope with emotions without using food. If you are eating because you're lonely or you're bored or uh, you're angry or it calms you down, um, those are not really good reasons to eat. You, you, and it doesn't solve the problem of being lonely or bored or, or frustrated. Um, you need some, maybe you need some help to deal with those emotions in, instead, or or you call a friend, or you go for a walk. Figure out how to how to deal with that in, instead of using food for those those things. All right. Um, one last topic that I was asked to cover is how to keep fueled up and and energized. So um, here's a few tips is to eat every four to five hours because that's about how long it takes for your your stomach to become empty from, from the meal. It, it actually takes about two hours uh, from eating a, a food um, for your cells to totally absorb it. So after two hours now you're, you're starting to become empty again. So um, eating every four to five hours keeps you fueled up so that you don't go into the low zone uh, and that's what you want to prevent. Um, try not to rely on sugar or junk because it's going to be a temporary fix. It's not going to last very long. It might be satisfying in your mouth, but it's not what your body needs for good quality fuel. Look at the good quality um, carbohydrate list back there and I'm also going to talk uh, about um, some ideas on the next slide. The carbohydrate pro protein combination is great because you're getting the good quality fuel of the carbohydrate and then you get the um, protein that makes it last longer. Um, so that, that's what you want to do for a really healthy healthy snack and to stay energized, the carbohydrate protein, protein combination is especially effective. And I'm going to give you some ideas for that. Um, and I'm not sure you can read it. It's kind of a yucky slide. Can you read this? Give us a thumbs up if you can read this. I can't even read it. Let's see. There we go. John. No, there we go. Buddies can read it. Okay. okay good. All right. Well, that's cool. All right. Okay. So, um, yeah, these, you, mm -hmm. you show us the hands if you can read it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. All right. Well, the, these are some ideas that, that I, I put together for you for um, uh, high quality carbohydrate plus the lean protein combination. That's, that's the ideal thing. Um, so these are all ideas for snacks or maybe even little mini meals or, or you can expand it to be a, 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 a lunch or a breakfast or something like this. So, uh, you know, pick out some things that, that you like and, and keep it around you. Um, my favorite actually for uh, a power snack is uh, a piece of fruit and a handful of nuts. That's that's the uh, that's a really good power snack, and you almost never get get tired of it. And it's very healthy for your body. You're getting all kinds of good uh, vitamins and healthy fiber, and you know the monounsaturated fats and the um, nuts. So good stuff. Um, that's all, all I had for you today. Do you have uh, nutrition questions? Okay, here's um, Flory's contact information. If you had anything specific, you can email her for the like the recipes and stuff like that. 
Um, yeah, three day, three a day pushaways. Yeah. What's a three day push away? Push away from the table. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, when you're when you're full, get up and leave the table. That's a good idea. Um, um, we want to thank Dan Tackett for setting this up, and um, and can you guys give us a uh, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the presentation? Okay, smiley face we got from John. Good. Good. Well, I hope you got a few ideas. Okay. Good deal, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks very much, and Stay appreciate healthy. it. Okay, we'll see you.